I struggle with finishing book series in a timely manner, and by struggle, I mean I don't do it. Sometimes it takes me a couple of months or even a year to pick up the next book in a series. And I'm trying to get better at that because honestly, it's really annoying like forgetting what happened in a series and then getting back to the series and being confused. What? It's happened one too many times. More than one too many times. That being said, I'm in the middle of several series right now and I will finish slash get caught up with a few in this video. I used to film like this all the time at night, but now like my LED lights are broken, so I'm like disappearing into the darkness. Can you see me? Anyway, Long Way Down is the ninth book in the Addicted slash Callaway Sister series. I'm almost a third of the way through the book at page 200, and it has already mentioned like multiple times that Lo really loves Marvel comics. And that reminds me of some really cool glasses I want to show you. I have Marvel comics on my glasses right now. Now I have Marvel Comics in black and white on my glasses right now. Lo would absolutely love these and that makes me love them more. Thank you Pair Eyewear for sponsoring this video and making it so easy to buy new glasses and switch up top frames. It's so easy to just go on their website and pick out new base frames, especially with their virtual try-on tool. I ended up choosing the Reese frames without having to leave the comfort of my own home. Once you choose base frames, you can put in your prescription or get blue light glasses like me. Then comes the fun part where you can look at their wide selection of top frames. I picked out four frames, including these green ones that I just thought like were very simple and could really go with anything. Then I went with something way less simple and that is the colorful Marvel Comics frames. It blows my mind that this amount of detail can go on glasses. These might be my favorite frames, but I also love the black and white Marvel. This one looks like comic strips and it's black and white, so I feel like it can match anything. And last but definitely not least, I chose the Central Perk top frames. I'm a big fan of the TV show Friends, so the iconic coffee shop logo caught my eye. I think popping on top frames is so much fun, especially since these are so affordable. The top frames start at only $25. Pair Eyewear has great customer service, and they also help provide glasses for children in need. Click the link in the description box for 15% off your first pair, or use my code AaronRodder15. Once again, thank you so much, Pair Eyewear, for sponsoring this video. Back to Long Way Down, I'm gonna say something that I feel like I've said a million times, and that is I love the Addicted series because all the characters and the problems feel so real. I mean, it's called the Addicted series because some of the characters struggle with addiction in the books, and even if a character doesn't struggle with addiction, they have something else that could be very heavy that they have to deal with. More like multiple something else's. They have a lot of problems. This series shines light on like mental health and like familial issues, and other devastating things that I can't like really get into because then it's spoiling things. The core group of characters are like rich and famous and I feel like when I usually like pick up series like that I'm just like oh like I'm just gonna read about a whole bunch of drama that I will never relate to which does remain true but there is a plethora of problems in this series that like the average person might also face. Krista and Becca Ritchie just did such an amazing job at like creating flawed characters that are still so lovable and it does blow my mind that these characters are made up like they're not real. Like that was just an idea in their heads. What? I'm just thinking like they've been through so much, they've survived so much and they're still going strong. No, they're not because they never existed. Anyway, this specific book follows the youngest Calloway sister who I just want to give a big hug to. She grew up as a model and went through a lot at a very young age and she just seems to like never catch a break. While there are so many challenges within her story, there is like a nice balance of like happy and lighter moments and oh, I live and breathe for those moments. I think this was originally written to be like the last book in the series. And I believe this next book is like an epilogue novel, which I will get to next. Honestly though, I love this series. I hate to say it. I think the couple in this book is my least favorite. I'm not saying I don't like them because I love them, truly. I just love these couples more. Like if I had to rank them. I don't know, I, don't, I can't do it, they're my kids. Okay, this book specifically, in this series, 
the problems are not too like outlandish they're pretty normal problems they're just like normal people but with money and a big following and i think the couple of this book is going to grow up a lot in this book and i'm kind of kind of excited kind of like sad it's happening but it's definitely something and i'm gonna read it and i'm probably gonna be sad when i finish the book and then i'm going to talk about it non-stop Reading is so much fun. You are really hurting me. I know you play your part, but baby, it's breaking my heart. How could I know? If you don't need me, just let me know and I'll go. I know you play your part, but baby, it's breaking my I feel like I just need to like go through every book and be like, I cried during this one, I cried during that one. Now I want to like prove myself and be like, I haven't cried reading every single book I've read. I obviously did with this one. Yeah. Genuinely traumatized. Um, so I do think Krista and Becca Ritchie should pay for my therapy. I am 500 pages into Long Way Down and you know, I was stabbed in the heart by Krista and Becca Ritchie. I no longer know what happiness is. Um... Just kidding. I think about this series and my heart melts and I'm so happy, but I'm so, so sad right now. <laughs> what is currently happening in this book, I dreamed about the other day and I was like, oh, it'd be crazy if this happened in the Addicted series. And then it did. You know, when you're like, it's like I was, I was sort of reading and I had this gut feeling something was going to happen. And then it happened. This book and like storyline feels so important. There's one specific plot line in here that I thought was like really dramatic and unrealistic. And then I Googled if that had happened in real life and it did. This family just has so much media coverage and I was kind of thinking to myself like, why? But they're supposed to be like the Kardashians level famous. But I feel like the Kardashians like love being famous and try to stay relevant. And these guys are like, we don't want to be relevant. We just want to live normal lives. And I just feel like you wouldn't be getting that much media coverage if you didn't want to be famous. But maybe there's like less famous celebrities that go through these problems as well. And I'm just not aware of it. Even though I'm saying there are certain parts that I think are unrealistic. Um, I still love this story so much. And I have 140 pages left to go. And as of right now, it is a five-star read. I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. More than likely, this is a five-star read unless something bonkers happens and makes me go, what? I hated that, which can happen, but I don't think it will. I'm going to continue to read and probably love it. Let's be real here. I'm going to love it. If I don't, I think this will be the biggest upset of my life. Anyway, I only have like 140 pages left to go, so I'm going to like get through those tonight. So then... I can start this bad boy. I finished Long Way Down, and it is, in fact, a five-star read. It wrapped up pretty nicely. I didn't cry anymore, which, yeah, you know, like, I feel like I don't have too much more to add because, like, what else is there to say? I feel like I've already shared my feelings. I just love this series so much. But I am a little fearful that I'm not going to love some kind of perfect, and let me tell you why. For the most part, I skip epilogues because they're all the same, and they're all fairly boring. If I really love the couple, I will read it. Like, all of the epilogues that... Are... 
I don't know if all the Addicted books have epilogues, but I have been reading the epilogues for the Addicted series and other select books, but for the most part, I will skip it because they get married. They have a baby. You know, it's something years down the line, what their life is like, but, like, the, it's all the same. It's why I'm a little hesitant about this book because I'm like, oh, is, like, gonna be, like, kind of boring? Is it just, like, oh, this is their life now? That they're, like, mature and they don't have the problems that they used to. This book is 743 pages, so I'm hoping that there's, like, actual content in here and it's not super boring. And then there's bonus content that makes it 808 pages. This book is slightly different because it follows, like, all three couples, and in the other books it would follow, like, one couple at a time. I'm really not ready to leave this universe yet. This is the last one. I feel like this series is so long, so when you're going through it, you're like, okay, like, I always have another book to go to, but this is the last one. When I read this, then what? Like, I know there's spinoffs. I have already ordered one of the spinoffs. But it won't be the same because the Core 6 will no longer be the main characters. It's like when you binge watch, like, a really long TV show and then you finish it and you're just like, wow. Now what? What do I do with my life now? It's like, ugh. Even though this book is over 740 pages, I'm convinced I will have this finish by the time I go to bed tomorrow night. That is so unrealistic, but I better get reading. pages into some kind of perfects and I cannot believe I ever doubted Krista and Becca Ritchie. This book is not boring. There's still problems in this book. It's not just rainbows and happiness and sunshine. I mean for the most part it is compared to like the rest of the series. But they're still working through stuff. From what I've noticed with epilogues and romance books, characters tend to lose a little bit of their personality and they get all boring and soft on us. These guys are still full of personality and still have so many great funny years left. Also this cover is so sweet. Rose, Lily, Daisy, I'm so proud of myself for actually getting through, like, almost, almost getting through a 10 book series without having major spoilers because I feel like in fantasy books that never happens. I always get something spoiled for me. Anyway, I don't have too much to add, but I have quite a bit to read, so I'm gonna, yeah, continue to do that. pages in and my heart is so happy. This is so wholesome, but I'm starting to get sad because like I only have like 240 pages left of the series and then it's done. I don't want it to be done. This book doesn't really have a main plot to it. It has just like different scenes from different random moments in time of each family slash like the point of view of one of the six. I'm now entering 2025, which is kind of weird because like Obviously, I think this whole book was set in the future at the time of it being written, but now it's like really the future, like, oh. It's kind of weird, like, reading the characters' ages because I'm like, oh, wait, you're old now, what? I mean, they're not that old, but like in the first book, they're like all like college-aged and now they're not. They're in their 30s. Obviously, I know when you're in your 30s, you're not old, but I'm also just like trying to imagine what I'm gonna be like in my 30s. And that's terrifying. So my goal was to finish this yesterday. I didn't do that, but I did read like 400 pages, which... <laughs> okay, okay, Erin. I'm pretty impressed with myself. Like, if this was a normal length book, I would have finished it. Did you know the Addicted series is over 1 million words long? <sighs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna suck it up and finish it. <laughs> I'm gonna do it.
not even like, oh, I just finished some kind of perfect. I finished the whole series. I finished all of this. This past year, if I ever felt like I was in a slump, oh, I'll just pick up the next addicted book. But I can't do that anymore. As I was marking this as read in Goodreads, I was like, wait a minute. I think I read like the first book addicted to you around this time last year. Go to find out, yeah, I was reading this a year ago today. It feels so full circle to me. I wanna say at this point a year ago today, I would have no idea that I would love these characters so much, but I love them right off the bat. I see so many people talk about the series and say, oh, like the first couple of books, they're not that good, but they get amazing. I really liked the first book. It's like the annoying insta-love trope, but it's like me in this series. It's just insta-love. Right off the bat, we connected. I feel like a dead giveaway that I love this series so much is that I will never, ever, ever read a 740-page book in the span of two days. It took me two weeks to read A Court of Silver Flames. I think this book is interesting because it just, like, shows life after all the hecticness of, like, the Addicted series. The characters, like, continue to grow up and have struggles, and I think that's really nice because a lot of times, I'm, I mean, I'm an epilogue hater. I feel like this is a series that I'm going to continue to think about, like, in years to come. There's so many, I feel like, lessons that I've learned reading these books, which is like, kind of like, oh, it's a drama romance series. Like, what could you possibly learn? But I feel like a changed person after reading these books. These books are definitely not everybody's cup of tea, but they, they're mine. That's for sure. I don't even like tea. But like, if these books were tea, I would drink it. I would definitely drink it. trying really hard to focus on this book, but my brother is playing John Cena's theme song right now. pages into Iron Flame, which is the second book to Fourth Wing. I really liked Fourth Wing. I gave it like four and a half stars. And I, like everybody else, was excited for Iron Flame to come out. Then it wasn't getting the best reviews, and I put it off. Then I had a friend rave about it. She loved it, and she was like, I want to hear your opinions. And I, of course, told her I was going to read it right away. So that was two months ago. Better late than never. At least I'm actually picking it up. Anyway, if you are somehow unfamiliar with Fourth Wing, it's like Divergent, but with dragons. Like this series focuses on the riders, which is kind of similar to like the Dauntless from Divergent. Because they're always doing like super dangerous things and they're like kind of like soldiers and they ride dragons, which is dangerous. Anyway, loved Fourth Wing. Now we're on to Iron Flame and I'm not quite sure how I feel yet. Before we get into anything about this book, I want to talk about the word count because it's actually kind of ridiculous. It's taking me quite a while to get through these pages and I was like, am I going crazy? Like, why can't I read this faster? Come to find out, the first Crescent City book is sitting at 800 pages with a word count of around 204,000. While this book is only 623 pages long, the word count is 251,000 words. This is roughly 180 pages shorter, but it has like 50,000 more words. The main character, Violet, is constantly telling us how attractive her love interest is. She is constantly simping over this man, and we get it, you think he's hot. If you were to take out all the raunchy thoughts that Violet has over this man, the book would be this thick. That could just be sticking out to me a lot because I've been reading a lot of YA recently and this is not YA, that's for sure. I want to say when reading Fourth Wing, I actually liked Violet, but I'm not really liking her as much in this book. I think we're supposed to find her like a little relatable because she has like snarky and sarcastic comments. Cause like when she's told to do something, she'll be like, I'd rather die than do it. And then she goes and does it. And I think as an audience, we're supposed to be like, oh, she's so funny and relatable and quirky. And 
But I'm getting like kind of annoyed. I don't know, I don't find it funny. Don't get me wrong though, she has her moments where she's like a fierce leader and I'm like, oh, like that's cool. But then there's other moments where I'm like, oh, that was like really annoying. So far the majority of this book has been like about politics and I think I prefer the first book over to this. I think the politics in this are kind of boring. While I view the politics as like important to the storyline, I'm also like, oh, I don't really want to read about that. I've heard so many people talk about the ending of this book and say like, it's gonna leave you like mind blown, it's crazy. So I'm like really excited to get to it. I'm gonna try to keep reading this with like an open mind but as of right now, my expectations aren't very high. When it comes to this book, I'm having such a hard time putting my thoughts into words. But I'm going to try really hard for you. I am 500 pages into Iron Flame. I'm definitely enjoying it a lot more. There's been a lot more action. But there's like this specific part of the book that I was like, wait... I really like this, but at the same time, it's like really cliche. And I feel like I can guess how it's going to end. I know it's going to happen because I've read it before. This kind of sounds bad, but then I realized like the whole plot of this book I've read probably five, ten times. I'm looking at my dystopian and fantasy books right now, and so many of them follow the same storyline as this. I mean, they all take place in, like, different worlds and slightly different circumstances, but they all follow, like, the same baseline. I mean, I don't exactly expect authors to, like, reinvent the wheel or anything, but this is actually kind of wild how similar a lot of the popular series are to one another. But maybe this is just, like, what people will read. Like, they have to do it because that's what the people want. That might be, like, a conversation for another time. With this book more specifically, I think I still like Fourth Wing better, but I'm enjoying this more. There's some parts of this book that are kind of catty. Anyway, I'm here for the drama. I love it. Which I feel like I say I love drama a lot and I need to clarify, like, not in my real life. But, like, isn't fantasy drama so fun because, like, you do someone wrong and then all of a sudden they're, like, out for blood? Like, actually, I just gave my dragon your home address. The amount of pages spent talking about how attractive her man is has really died down, which I so very much appreciate. But now I'm getting, like, really excited for the end of this book. And if it doesn't blow my mind, I am unfriending all of you on Goodreads. If I know you IRL and you hyped up the end of this book and I don't like it, blocked. It better be bonkers. I'll be sure to get my reaction. Anyway, I only have like just over 100 pages, which usually doesn't take me very long, but <laughs> word count. There's like a problem here, but I guess I'm just really stupid because I don't understand why that would be a problem. How is that, how is that any different than, whatever, whatever, whatever. Like that was really it was kind of a letdown so I finished Iron Flame and I didn't guess the ending but it also doesn't really shock me I liked the ending but like my heart rate didn't like accelerate reading it or anything it made me excited for the next book though like I have high hopes for the next book I think it could be very entertaining so like there's a part of this book that like made me a little emo but like I couldn't cry because I feel like I cry too often while reading because like I don't want to lose my credibility and be like guys this book is so amazing it made me cry and then someone points out girl you're always crying which is not true. I 
I just get emotionally attached to characters. So I liked this book, but a part of me also thought it was boring. I'm glad I powered through and like finished the whole book because I am excited for the next book to come out, but I'm gonna have to give this three stars. Like even though the ending was pretty solid, I can't just like look past all the parts that I didn't love. I'm 99 pages into Powerful, which is book 1.5 in the Powerless trilogy. This does not follow the same main character from this book. To give you a little rundown on Powerless, it's about Payden, who is an ordinary in a world of extraordinaries. They're called elites. It's been a while since I've read this book, okay? Basically, Payden does not have powers, but like, in order to be in this kingdom, you have to have powers or else they're gonna like, banish you, kill you, you know, whatever they see fit. They want everybody to be like, elite in this society. So she pretends to have powers, um, and is trying to just survive. But then she gets selected to be a part of like the purging trials, which is like kind of similar to the Hunger Games, which can we talk about the new Hunger Games book? What? What? Suzanne? Stay on topic. Okay, so it's like purging trials mean like, oh, if you go into the purging trials, you're probably gonna die, you know, like the Hunger Games, you're gonna die. But there's always hope you might win, right? Powerful takes place at the same time as Powerless, but it's about Peyton's best friend, Adina, who's trying to survive herself because she has terrible survival skills. I mean, they're poor. And like, Adina, can she really survive without Peyton? In this novella, we see Adina get wrapped up with this guy named Mac, who is like, kind of like, morally gray. He also has a loved one in the trials, and he didn't get to say goodbye to her, so he's like, oh, like, she's gonna die, and I didn't get to say goodbye. So then he's like, Adina, we need to work together so we can like, sneak into the castle and say goodbye to our loved ones. Unfortunately, I don't think Powerful is as good as Powerless, and I think that's mostly because I like Peyton more than I like Adina. This is not bad by any means, but I feel like Adina is definitely more of a side character than like a main character. She just doesn't have like the personality to be a main character. She's the goofy side character that everybody loves as that. You know, it's their purpose is to be the friend. I feel like you can get through this trilogy fine without reading this book. The second book's not out yet. Who am I to say you can get through it fine without reading this? I don't know. It's not out. I haven't read it. I read Powerless over a year ago. I read it before it was traditionally like published, so I forgot a lot of what happened in here. So this little novella is sort of serving as like a little recap for me um, for when Reckless comes out because it is coming out so soon and I'm very excited. But this keeps reminding me of things that I forgot happened, so that's amazing. Even though I don't like this as much as I like Powerless, it's like a really fast read and I'm just gonna continue to keep going and vibing and, you know, going with the flow, I guess. Anyway, I'm gonna go finish this now. powerful and I'm gonna rate it three stars because I feel like I look at this book and I'm just like yes like it's it's in the middle it's at that three like I liked it but I didn't love it it's a solid novella I thought it was interesting like reading about Adina's story and I think the overall message of this book is really sweet it's dedicated to the girls with softer dreams your purpose is just as powerful that is so sweet I feel like this is more so like a nice bonus to the series but I don't think it's like 100% necessary to read but I keep saying this and I haven't read the rest so I really need to just shut my mouth. You can tandem read this with Powerless but I don't know if I'd want to do that or not. I feel like it wouldn't be as fun. I feel like I didn't connect to the characters in this as much but I feel like they didn't really have a fair shot because it is like a novella like it's a tiny book like this is tiny and it's short. I want to say I read this in like less than two hours, so I feel like when you don't spend that much time with the characters, are you that invested? I'm not, but I feel like if I read this like right after reading Powerless, I would be more invested. Which reading this so far after Powerless was definitely not my fault. This was released recently. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. If you would like, comment, and subscribe. I would very much appreciate it. I will see you at some point or another, besties. Bye! <laughs>